Hello and welcome to Wall Street Trainings module on Finance 101. My name is Hamilton Lin and I have a background in investment banking and mergers and acquisitions, having worked at Goldman Sachs in investment banking, as well as Bank of America Securities in the mergers and acquisitions group, as well as two other boutique investment banks, all focused on mergers and acquisitions. I am a CFA charter holder as well and the president and founder of Wall Street Training. In the next a little segment, we will go through an explanation of the basic financial concepts that one must absolutely master, what we call the Finance 101, Introduction to Finance Topics, that one must absolutely know in order to be able to understand the concepts in the basic financial modeling, valuation, how to analyze, and rip apart companies. With that in mind, let's turn now, to our slide. take this slide. concept of beta and integrate it within the capital asset pricing model and to look at how we value all securities. The capital asset pricing model is a model to price capital assets. What does that mean? CAPM, capital asset pricing model. Recall, we will not want to reward you for risk that you could have diversified away, that firm specific risk. We will only reward you for the risk that you could not diversify away. If that's the case then, how do we measure and how do we measure how much to compensate you for that risk? Well, recall, that was through beta. We will measure the amount of risk that you bring to the entire portfolio, a well-diversified portfolio, and now to figure out exactly how we will incentivize and compensate you for this additional risk that you are bringing on. Let's turn back to our slides. Our slide says the following. CAPM is the model that says a stock's required return is equal to the risk-free rate, risk-free rate plus a risk premium that reflects the riskiness of a stock after diversification. That's a lot of words to say in one sentence. What does that mean? Let's start with the risk-free rate portion. The risk-free rate basically says, this is the amount that you can expect to earn your opportunity cost of what you can earn risk-free, typically the U.S. Treasuries. Meaning that regardless of what you do, you should be at a minimum, at a minimum, be able to make this return. Why? Because you can easily take your money and put it in the U.S. Treasury for 10 years or 30 years or whatnot, and from there you'll be able to guaranteed make this return. Therefore, if you're now going to invest in anything aside from a risk-free asset, you now must make an additional premium to compensate for that risk. Again, how much is that risk? That risk is measured via this section of the CAPM equation. And what this means once again is, well, if I'm going to invest in the market, S&P 500 let's say, what is the risk premium that the market will make on top of the risk-free rate? So RM, the return on the market, minus the risk-free rate, this equals the market risk premium. Once again, you are trying to figure out, well, if I don't invest my money in the risk-free rate, how much will I actually be able to invest in? What is the additional risk or the return that I will get for taking on this additional market risk? As we talked about, we will now take the concept of beta. We will take beta, your sensitivity of that one stock to the entire market, multiplied by this market risk premium. In other words, if you are particularly sensitive, you are a very, you are a very volatile stock that every time the market goes up, your stock goes up, and every time the market goes down, your, stank, your, your stock tanks, sort of like a tech firm. From that perspective there, this now is the additional risk that we will add to your return on the stock. So at a minimum, once again, you should make the risk-free rate plus beta times the market risk premium. Now, let's summarize this from the words on the slides. What this means is the market risk premium is how much the market has to return above the risk-free rate to compensate the investor for the average amount of risk. When you take your beta for that stock times the market risk premium, this is how much the additional return an investor can expect to be fairly compensated for taking on this additional non-diversifiable risk that they could not get rid of. And remember, the relevant riskiness of a stock and therefore the amount that we should compensate you for your return is the contribution to a well-diversified portfolio. You will not get compensated for firm-specific risk. In other words, for firm-specific risk, you will not be compensated for that to which this whole thing you will add an error term. So usually they say plus E for error term because there's always going to be some sort of error on this as it is not a perfect model. This is a theoretical model. But let's think about why this is important, folks. Fundamentally, CAPM is a theory. It's not truly observable in the market. 
But why is it that this is one of the most important fundamental concepts in finance and evaluation? If cap M does not hold true, rather let me say it another way. If people, if investors are not trying to achieve or to beat cap M, the system will break down. If this whole concept of risk and return, what's diversifiable, and the volatility and how to capture that volatility via beta against the entire market, if those fundamental concepts don't hold true and people do not have a way to try to systematically beat the market, fundamentally what we're trying to figure out efficient markets, this will not work. And therefore, from that perspective, you will always see CAPM as the most fundamental concept within corporate finance for the WAC, for the discount rate, because this actually gets you your required return on equity. Let me come back to that in one second. But again, if people do not fundamentally try to achieve or beat CAPM, they are going to effectively, the system will not, the system will break down. The last comment I just made prior there was the fact that this whole thing calculates CAPM. What this really means is, since we are looking at equity analysis in this particular case here, stocks, the risk-free rate plus this market risk premium times beta, that whole thing gets you the required return on equity. The required return on equity. Since this is the required return on equity, this can also be said that for the management team of a company to issue equity, this is the amount that the investors will require on their equity investment if they were to invest and buy stock of a company. Therefore, this is also for that company the cost of attaining this equity. So this is what we also call the cost of equity. So CAPM gets us RE, return on equity, required return. This is also equal to KE for the cost of equity. This is an important concept, folks. This is an important concept that will now wrap back towards the next few slides into our WAC, Weighted Average Cost of Capital. Our return on equity is also the cost of issuing this equity.